So welcome to Laura and Penny's show, as well as having guests in, talking about their specialities. Myself and Benny, hello Benny, <laughs> are going to do a couple of short episodes in between to do some hints and tips, everything weddings. Actually I, talk about weddings. Actually talking about weddings. Now I don't know what's going on as usual. You have a list. This is the how much does Laura know impromptu moment. Go. You've <laughs> <laughs> been summonsed. Summonsed. So yeah, like, it is yeah. like court. It is like jury education. It is, it is. It is. It is. But no, one of the big things I've come up, I suppose, after the last few years is late ceremonies. So your 3 p.m. ceremony. Okay. So we're going to talk about those kind of scenarios and what people okay. can do, particularly people that are probably coming into it spring, summer, and they may be in contact with their venue and working out a ceremony time if they haven't, or those in autumn, December, autumn, winter. Um, when it's more kind of a light issue. Small issue with Small the light. Issue. So you want to appear to talk about venue all day long. We're not moving between locations. That's the type of 3 p.m. ceremony you're thinking about. That's 3 p.m. Cer- okay. ceremony where normally it's the venue that dictates, actually we do our ce- yeah. ceremonies at 3 p.m. Yeah. Okay. So first and foremost, so spring, summer, what's the issue about a late ceremony? So if you're in the venue all day long, your ceremony time is 3 p.m. The thing to think about is the majority, like not the majority of the day, but a lot of the day um, has spent preparing for a three o'clock clock wedding. You're waiting for the three o'clock wedding to come around, which personally, I don't think I'd want to wait that late in the day, especially when you're getting off the work. You're not going to sleep in. The lads might. The girls are definitely not going to sleep in. You're excited. You are trying to get your brain to kind of stay quiet. You're probably going to wake up early. And then you've got a very, very, very long wait to get to actually walking up the aisle at three o'clock. So the way I would look at it as well is if it's waiting at three o'clock for the ceremony to start, and that's the first time you see your partner, the first time you see all your guests, then what time is your bell call? The average time for a bell call is 5.30. So the way I look at it is I don't see there being a reason why you need to condense pretty much the majority of the wedding day into a two and a half hour, very, very short period. And it's that short because you got to think about what happens between you're walking up the aisle at three o'clock and to be honest with you it's probably going to be the laugh to three because that's a wedding um, and they ringing the bell for everyone to move into the banqueting room area two and a half hours you've got the full end of the ceremony you've got all the guests exiting to congratulate you um depending on how many are there is depending on how long that will take you got your family photos your bridal party photos your couple photos and then just as importantly your drinks reception so i suppose if you were talking to a couple and i would say to them um, how long would you like new drinks this afternoon? What's the answer we get mostly? Yeah, yeah. People want an hour. An hour. At least an hour. Yeah. Try get me an hour. If exactly. Twenty five minutes. It is what it is. Yeah. But an hour would be great. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, an hour. Which and I agree, you do need an hour because you've more than likely hired live music. It's the time where you actually get to eat the canopies you've picked out, drink the the speciality drinks, chat to your guests. You know, take the selfies, get the friend groups together. Um. So if that's an hour, there's only an hour and a half left to do a ceremony. A receiving line, family photos, bridal party photos, and couple photos. The ceremony in the receiving line, on average, that's about an hour as well. So you've only got half an hour to do your photo shoot. Now you've probably spent a lot of time researching who your photographer is going to be, who your videographer is going to be, and to kind of then only give them. Now I'm not saying it can't be done because we have done it. We have done this in yeah. half an hour many a time, but to give someone thirty minutes, and this is when nothing goes wrong. There are no delays, there are no hiccups, and everybody is, you know, there and present. <laughs> what you find on a wedding day, even though you warn people, a lot of the time there's always someone missing. And that kind of takes into time. So you need that buffer as well of just, you know, moving from place to place, finding people, getting things together. It's really condensing a big part of the day into a two and a half hour time frame. Okay, so that's just in general, yeah. if you're going from three to five thirty, yeah, you're already condensing it into it. Yeah. And then the added thing is for those that are planning in autumn, December. Yeah. You're saying autumn, December instead of autumn, winter. I don't know why. Because December, December is such the darkest okay. month. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's why, why it yeah. is. It's really trigger. But if you're getting married in November, December, particularly, the additional issue is the light. Yeah. So if you're getting married at three, there's a good chance that the time you're going to start your photo shoot, if you're lucky, is four o'clock. 
if you were to ask me what time is it, does it get dark in December, I would tell you four o'clock. <laughs> yeah, but maximum, <laughs> for photography. Got between quarter past yeah. four and half four, it's pretty much gone. If it's a bright day, but if it's a dull day, four o'clock could be your cut off. Now, okay. you can still get dusk and after dark photographs, but everybody, I'm assuming, wants those daylight photographs as well. Okay, so in general, yeah. there are issues. Timing yeah. and light in Ireland are the key issues yeah. around timing. So, around the, the late ceremony. So, a couple have been told by, by their venue, or they're just in contact with their mm -hmm. venue, and they've just found out, or the venue has suggested, you can have the ceremony on site at yep. 3 p.m. You don't know how strong or how, uh, how flexible the venue are, so what are the various options you can do in general when a venue says that to, to you and you're not too hot on going at 3 p.m.? What can you do? Okay. What are your options? Well, the first thing I would do would be actually speak to the, the venue. Um, just because somebody has told you it's a three o'clock wedding ceremony, like it might not be it's a strict rule. It's more that this is the way we do things the majority of the time. So they've just reverted back to this is this is the, this is our the time frame, the suggestion. Yeah. So the chances are if you go to somebody and you kind of say to them, listen, I would much prefer to get married at two or half two. How flexible are you on it? They might tell you, yeah, that's no problem. We can do that for you. Um, which, at even 30 minutes on a wedding day, it's such a massive, I know it sounds like a very short amount of time, yeah. but it's a massive amount of time when actually getting things done. So that's your first option. Um, your second option, I suppose, when it comes to, you know, creating time, I suppose if we're still in the summer months and you're still not worrying about light or anything like that, yeah. and you just want more time in your drinks reception. Um, the other option would be, is you could move the photo shoot time from after the ceremony to before the ceremony. Now this isn't for everybody. Yeah, so you're just swapping the order. You're so swapping the standard the order. is yeah. ceremony, photo shoot, drinks, reception, dinner, exactly. speeches, and, and so on and so on. Yeah. Um, but you're just flipping. So you're going to do yeah. photo shoot first, then ceremony, yeah. then drinks, reception. Yeah, which means you're probably going to get about an hour and a half to chill with your friends. And especially in the summertime, because like, drinks, reception are lovely 12 months of the year, but when in the summer, when those June, July, August weddings, where you're after picking the most spectacular venue and there's lovely gardens and you've got your live music playing and, and it's a sunny day and everyone's yeah. outside, like an hour and a half outdoors, having a drink, chilling with the friends and family, like that could be the part of the day you remember the most and it could end up being your favourite part of the day. Like a lot yeah. of people have said that to me. I actually really enjoyed the drinks reception. It was such a nice yeah. day. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, and a lot of couples as well that we have we do a lot of first looks and a lot of pre-ceremony shoots when we because we offer it to people when the time is short or the light is short um, the feedback we get though from couples a lot of time is is why do not more people not do it this way like I actually loved doing it yeah. this way um, and it just because the amount it takes the pressure off it you know you can just relax you can feel like there's no formalities left once you walk down the aisle and you're free to do what you want um, now there are people out there that they're kind of probably thinking that's not for me though I don't want to see my other half until yeah. that moment so in the ceremony then the, the, the yeah. scenario is so basically I'm not doing a pre-shoot because I don't want to do a first yeah. look I want to do the ceremony walk and that's the first time I want to see yeah. my partner so then you don't want to do the pre-shoot mm -hmm. and your venue says absolutely it's three o'clock or nothing you're not having a ceremony here it's not three o'clock you're making it hard for me very good what's <laughs> the next option so I suppose the third option and it might not be like okay so it's kind of like end game option end game yeah and that, like, like, I'm not saying go out and do this I'm no, no, just no, saying just that like, we have to give yeah. some different options and venues yeah. are accommodating and they will yeah. work with you but there is an alternative yeah but if there's absolutely no flexibility and they're yeah. just and you've explained as you know as, as to why you want to move it and they're not even willing to budge 30 minutes for you yeah, yeah. Um, the, what I would do is is look at alternative ceremony spaces in the area yeah. I'm not talking about a, a long distance like there's I can think of a, a lot of different venues around Ireland where they do ceremony only, only yeah. um, and they also usually have the most beautiful grounds or they're close to the most beautiful photo shoots yeah. um, so you could look at the option of you know you can still get ready in your venue um, you're only driving five ten minutes down the road yeah. you know you're having your ceremony in a spot where they're completely you can have it at 12 1, 2 or 3 whatever you want to do yeah. you might then also be giving yourself you know two photo shoot locations where you can use the grounds of the ceremony as well as the grounds of your venue which yeah. you might love both of them yeah. um, but it just kind of gives you I suppose the reins back in a sense of I can, can cr create the timeline of my own wedding day rather than somebody telling me what the timeline of my wedding day should be. Yeah, so you're more like... Sorry, that's uh, very strong, but it's, it's true. No, though. That, yeah, that, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, yeah. No. So it's more like you have flexibility to have a ceremony at one o'clock, yeah. two o'clock, 
or three o'clock. Yeah. It's, it's dictated by yourself more so. Yeah. Um, and there are great places like so Kildrotary um, in Wicklow is yeah, a lovely place beautiful. and then like Sea Church in, in Cork, in Cork yeah. is, is lovely so there are yeah. places where you can go to specific uh, photo house and gardens is another yeah, one exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah and these so are all very so, central so places, places yeah. where people actually even even if they are going to a venue that offers you can have your ceremony actually people have already twigged I actually love this space and this yeah. is where I envision um, my ceremony yeah. so, so there are lots of different options so it's as we always say, it's about communicating and just talking. Mm-hmm. When you talk to the venue, you'll you'll get get a sense of what their policy is, how strict yeah. their policy is, how flexible they are. And it, it, if they're not that flexible, it's okay. There might be a logical reason as to why they're not flexible mm-hmm. and why they can or can't do something for you. Yeah. Um, but there now, are all, always alternatives. Yeah, and, and don't get me wrong. Like I mean, I understand why. If say if you're in a venue all day long and they you you ask the venue, can we do a one o'clock ceremony? I completely understand why the venue say that's too early because they're thinking of the length. So you have loads to do with your photo shoot and, yeah. and everything. You're very, very busy as the couple and even the couple's family, but for your guests. So if from two to five thirty, that's that's a three and a half hour hours. window. That's a, that's a lot of drinking. It's a lot, it's a lot of time, but for our people, yeah, it's a, lot, it's, a lot of time it in is, the bar. It it's is. a lot of time hanging. And so yeah. I, I see from the venue's point of view that that is too long of a drink reception. And if I was a wedding guest, I wouldn't want to be in a drink reception for three and a half hours either. So, because but there the is venue, a balance. Yeah. So yeah. traditionally, the ceremony, wherever you're having the ceremony, is offside. If you're going yeah. one to two, you might have a thirty minutes in general. So that's why traditionally, like your drink reception tends to be around three o'clock yeah. to five o'clock onwards. Yeah. Um, tends to be the window of when your guests are likely to arrive at the hotel. Yeah. And I suppose the other side of things as well is, and I'm talking about summer weddings, not winter weddings, because you still have the light as an issue in the winter. But in the summertime, if if you don't want to move offsite. They don't want to move from 3 p.m. The other question then to ask is, well, you suggested a half hour bell call. Can you move the bell call to six or half six so that you're yeah, pushing it out the yeah. other side? So like that's another option again to see. Like there, there has to be some flexibility so that you're happy with the timeline. The venue are happy with the amount of time the guests are in each place and everyone, they feel like everyone's fed and, you know, they've got yeah. drink and that they're happy with their experience as well. And it's important to have both sides. So that's a fourth yeah. option is, is yeah. you, you shift the bell call later. Yeah. We'll work out through the venue, with the venue, talk to them, well, how long is their service time? Yeah. How long the speech is going to be? So that, so that you're aware of yeah. what impact it may have on dancing, the band, the DJ. And um, be aware of that. Yeah. Is there any more on ceremony times? Um, I mean, like that's that's everything on in the same place at the venue. Um, the other thing is staying away from winter and staying away from the light. Is if you were going for a late ceremony time and you're having a church wedding, for example, say if you're doing a two p.m. church wedding, but your venue is an hour and a half drive away. Now, to some people listening to this, they go, "Oh, but sure, your venue would never be an hour and a half drive away." Ireland's a big place. We drive an hour to hour and a half between ceremony venues and the actual like um reception venue like a lot and when I say a lot it's a lot yeah. um, people you know they get married in their hometown in Cork and they drive over the border into Kerry they get married you know in their hometown like a, their home area in Dublin and they drive up to meet yeah. like they, and, and it's very very normal for people to do this so if you're planning a church ceremony and you go for two o'clock you have to just think about that hour and a half of travelling has been taken from the stretch of the day as well so if it's a two o'clock ceremony and it's a half five bell call you've got three and a half hours but an hour and a half of that is going to go into travelling. So that's something also to think of, that if there's a commute, push your ceremony time back a little bit if the church has the availability. So in general, yeah. be aware of timing and think about all, all the travel yeah. times, think of all the different catches yeah. in timing. That that's there it, is. yeah. But I suppose this gives people a chance because I think some people will start to find out, hang on, although I thought I was, I, I was having my ceremony at, at the venue, all of a sudden now I've been given this extra constraint of three o'clock and I, I just wasn't thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. So it gives them a chance of to try and work out what, what yeah. solutions they come up with. Exactly. Yeah. You're very good now. We didn't talk on too long. No, I'm very proud of myself. There's to be no messing in these now, okay? No ranting and going dead inside track talking about random stuff. I'm not even going to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Benny. <laughs>